Welcome back, this video is on natural selection, the process where an organism that's better suited to one environment survives. The ones that aren't suited to that environment don't end up surviving. Overall, this makes a population more suited to their environment and helps them survive. So let's look at a population of rabbits. Now some of the rabbits, just due to chance, might be fast and some of the rabbits might be slower, again, just due to chance. But if you have a hunter come along, so say the environment changes, now although there's some chance in who gets caught and who doesn't get caught, it's more likely that a greater proportion of the slow rabbits won't survive the hunter compared to the fast rabbits. And so in that case, you end up with a greater proportion of fast rabbits in your overall population. Meaning that generally speaking, the fast rabbits will survive, they'll breed, they'll make fast rabbit babies, and overall the population gets faster and faster, selecting for the fast allele as part of their selection process. Let's look at a New Zealand example now because you often need a New Zealand example of this in your NCEA exams. We're going to look at the Chatham Island Black Robin. And it's actually quite an interesting species of bird because in 1980, 25 odd years ago, there were only five of these birds that existed at all, their entire world population, five. Now, there's more than 250 birds, so it's not a big population, but it's still a lot bigger than it was. And this all originated from one single female called Blue, and it's a picture of her there. Now, you might think there was a bit of inbreeding going on, and there definitely was. But as a matter of fact, there was no inbreeding effects. So the offspring weren't mutated, didn't have deformities or disabilities at all. There are several theories about why this could be. One of them is that there's large genetic drift effects, what we learned about in the last video, with small populations. But also one could argue the fact that Blue is the last surviving female robin on the Chatham Island. So she must have great genes, really suited to that environment, better than any other bird. And therefore, her genes have been selected for in some way. And she's going to pass those genes on to her offspring in what we call natural selection. So, Blue must not have had the gene or the allele that expressed inbreeding effects. And therefore, she wouldn't have passed it on to any of her offspring. Meaning now the whole population of Chatham Island black robins have no inbreeding effects. They don't have the allele for it anymore. And one other thing to keep in mind is that Chatham Island black robins are located way out in the Chatham Islands, which if you don't know is very geographically isolated. It's too far for other robins to migrate or for them to immigrate out to other places to have genetic variation and interbreeding. So really, the black robin population on the Chatham Islands was isolated and all of these changes were due to genetic drift and natural selection. Now, to do one more example before we go through what you need to know, a common thing that comes up is called Darwin's finches. So Charles Darwin, who came up with the idea of natural selection and evolution, he noticed on an island he went to that there was an original finch and that if he went around the island to different places, he saw different variations of these finches. So ones that had buds or fruit, for example, had a shorter, stronger beak to break them open. The ones that were eating grubs had longer, skinnier beaks so that they could better get the grubs to do this, and so on and so on. Other ones needed to use tools, other ones ate other insects, and other ones had leaves. So this is an example that you might see come up from time to time. And again, it shows that there was natural selection for certain beak shapes, head shapes, and types of finches because it better suited the environment. These birds could better get to grubs. So naturally, they survived longer, they bred more, and their offspring had similar looking beaks and heads. So here's what you need to know. You need to know that natural selection is when organisms that are better suited to an environment survive longer, and they're the ones that produce offspring. This changes the whole population over time. Now the purpose of natural selection is that it helps the survival of a population. The ones that are more likely to survive end up breeding, meaning that all of their offspring are also more likely to survive. The New Zealand example we learnt was about the Chatham Island Black Robin. They all came from one female when there was a population of five, four males and one female. Now there's more than 250 and there are no interbreeding effects. There was a small population. And so although there may have been genetic drift which caused this black robin, also an argument is that Blue, that one female, could have survived due to natural selection because she was one of the few robins in a small population that didn't have inbreeding effects. So therefore, she may have passed that on to her offspring. Here's a question. Changes occur in the gene pool of populations over time. We know that. Examples in New Zealand include tussock grasses and the Chatham Island black robin. Perfect. We know all about this one. 
Now we need to discuss how genetic drift, natural selection, and migration can contribute to these changes. Now you need to refer, we need to refer in our answers to the examples that are given or any other New Zealand examples. Now you often get this sentence. So even if they haven't mentioned the Chatham Island Black Robin in your question, it means you can still talk about it because you now know. So first we're going to define our terms. We have the gene pool. This is all the alleles that are in a population. We have genetic drift from the last video, which talks about random chance and how often certain alleles get expressed. And we had natural selection from this video, learning about when organisms that are better suited to an environment tend to survive and produce the offspring. And we have migration. And this is the transfer of alleles from one population to another population. This is for genetic variation, and we learned about this in the last video. Now let's get on to answering the question. So we had the gene pool definition up here, and I'm just going to go through one by one how you could expand your answer and include an explanation. Because it says... Uh, discuss genetic drift, natural selection, and migration. So we had our definition for natural selection. For an explanation, you could add in that the Chatham Island Black Robin population all came from one female. This shows how the female, she was called Blue, was well adapted for the environment. This could have been because she was the only female, meaning she had to have some of the best survival genes to have got that far, and she produced a population of 250 or more, meaning that her genes have produced offspring that are well suited to the environment, and they thrived there. Now, in all fairness, there was a lot of intervention from people to make that happen. Now, we're talking about genetic drift. We had the definition for genetic drift, and remember that small populations are much more likely to change from genetic drift. And with the Chatham Island Black Robin, there was large genetic drift. It was highly likely there was. And this is because of the small population. The entire population came from one female. So whatever genes or alleles she randomly was expressing, they were the ones that all got passed on to the entire population of the black robins. And one of these alleles, sorry, there's a typo here, was lost from genetic drift, and that was the inbreeding effects. So there's now a healthy population of more than 250, despite the fact that they're all bred from a very small sample. Finally, let's look at migration. Now, we know what migration is, and this can mean that a species can gain new alleles from an outside population. But when we talked about the Chatham Islands and the Black Robin, migration had very little effect, because the Chatham Islands are so isolated to other birds, and particularly other robins, can't migrate and breed with the Chatham Island Black Robin. So they don't share alleles with the Chatham Island Black Robin, and therefore the population is isolated, and it's unlikely that migration would have had a significant effect on the gene pool. So this is a question on natural selection and we've bundled it with stuff about genetic drift and migration as well because that's how it's often done in your NCEA exams. Hope that makes sense.